I'm Andy Fisher, WNEW News. At eight minutes past ten, time for the Sears Radio Theater. That's the theme from the Sears Radio Theater. Tonight, a program of love and hate with Cicely Tyson as your hostess. Here's a preview. A professional golfer is not supposed to pay any attention to remarks he may hear from the gallery. But that bum accused me of throwing the tournament just because I was short. I know, short. I, I, I know, Mr. Muncy, but... Uh, that still doesn't excuse your actions. Well, what am I supposed to do? You've been a member of the PGA and on the tour long enough to know, Mr. Muncy. The Sears Radio Theater will begin after this message from your local station. I left my heart Love letters straight from you Bill missiles 90 miles from New York brought about the Cuban Missile Crisis, and doctors and nurses were all over the TV screen. The year 1962. Join me Sunday night after eight on a WNEW Million Dollar Weekend. Tony Awards, Broadway's tribute to its own, will be presented June 3rd. Beginning Tuesday, May 29th, WNEW begins a salute to Broadway and the Tony Awards. You'll hear some of the greatest songs ever written for the Great White Way. Have the opportunity to win tickets to all the shows presently on Broadway. Hear the people behind the scenes and above the footlights who made it the pinnacle of the theater world. And you'll have a chance to attend the Tony Awards show. Yes, a postcard to Salute to Broadway, WNEW, 655 3rd Avenue, New York, 10017, could win you a pair of tickets to the hottest black tie event of the Broadway season from the hot number 1130. Get your cards in now. And remember, a WNEW salute to Broadway begins May 29th. Mystery by the Masters. Edgar Allan Poe, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, Robert Louis Stevenson, Guy de Maupassant. You'll hear radio dramatizations of their most popular works on our CBS Radio Mystery Theater Weekend Classics. I'm E.G. Marshall, your host for Mystery seven times a week on most of these stations with original radio plays Monday through Friday. And on the weekends, we bring you the classics, modern adaptations of the world's greatest stories of mystery, adventure, suspense, and even humor from the pen of Mark Twain. If you've read them before and want to enjoy them again, or if they're new to you now, listen here and enjoy our radio dramatizations of the world's great literature every Saturday and Sunday on CBS Radio Mystery Theater. And of course, listen in Monday through Friday, too, for original tales of the macabre or for most of these CBS Radio Network stations. This is Cicely Tyson. On the 18th green of a famous golf course come two pairs of golfers followed by their caddies. The golfers exit into the scorer's tent. Shortly, two of them come out. One is Dr. Theodore Bassett, an MD. The other is the famous golf professional, Pat Muncy. The two have finished the pro amateur play of the American Classic Tournament, which begins the next day. They are followed by Augie Parvin, who is Pat's caddy. I should have sunk that putt on the 18th, Pat. Ah, uh, stop worrying about it. Well, I played like a duffer. Look, Theo, we won, didn't we? Well, that's not the point. I made you work so hard. It's just a game, so stop fretting. Hey, there's my wife. Hi, darling. Hello. Hi, Doc. Augie. Hello, Sharon. How did Ms. Muncy? How'd my husband do today? Badly, as usual. Why, he's crazy. Pat was brilliant, as usual. Oh, Mr. Muncy. Yeah, Augie? I'll put your clubs in your locker. Then I want to go over the course again, especially holes number 5 and 16. Whatever you say, Augie. I want to be a real help tomorrow, Mr. Muncy. Oh, bye, Mrs. Muncy. Bye. Bye, Augie. Bye, Augie. Augie Parvin's the best caddy I ever had. That's why I've kept him with me for the past five years. See you at the festivities tonight, Theo? Oh, sure thing. Be in Muncie's mob when the tournament starts tomorrow, too. So will I. Hope you take your patience as seriously as you do your golf, Theo. <laughs> oh, I do. But I still think I should have sunk that putt on 18. Ah. Well, I'll see you tonight. Bye. Car's over here, Pat. Okay. Mm. 
What'd you do? Oh, boy. I bumped my head getting into the car. <sighs> right there. Is it bleeding? No. Nothing shows. Hmm, still hurt? Uh, yeah, well, well, it'll pass. Lucky you got so much hair up there. Softens the blow. <laughs> just drive, Sharon. Don't make jokes. And that's just the beginning of our story. Radio Theater, a new adventure in radio listening. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week, brought to you in Elliot Lewis' production of The Sears Radio Theater. Our story, Muncie's Mob, by Ted Sherdeman. Our stars, Barney Phillips, Joan McCall, and Howard Culver. The Sears Radio Theater is brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company. Sears, where America shops for value. I sell draperies at Sears. Yesterday, a lady came in and said that she'd been in and out of about every store in town looking for draperies and at this point didn't know what she wanted anymore. I asked questions about her tastes and decor and then made suggestions. She was thrilled. She found what she wanted and learned a little too. It made me feel good to know that I helped her out. Sears people are friendly people who help you find what you want. Sears, 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 where America shops. Sears National Automotive Sale. Get big national savings on the Sears Die Hard. Only $49.99 with trade-in. You save $8 on the maintenance-free battery that starts nearly every car at Indy. And save on Sears Dynaglass Belted 28 Tires. They're on sale now at 40% off spring 1979 general catalog prices. Plus federal excise tax. Dynaglass Belted 28 Tires. Save 40% at most Sears Tire and Auto Centers. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Stop at Sears. The room held several Sears brass-plated lamps, one switched on. The finely plated antique satin shade illuminated the furniture softly. Another lamp turned on, and another. The patio doors blew open. The gloomy brass-plated lamp nearby, with its heavy base built for stability, did not budge. The room glowed in the brassy elegance that these Sears' best lamps command. Create your own hauntingly elegant moods with Sears brass-plated lamps at most larger Sears retail stores. Day of the American Classic Golf Tournament. Dr. Theodore Bassett and Sharon Muncy are part of the gallery known as Muncy's Mob, which follows Pat Muncy around the course. The medical man has noted that the pro golfer takes small white pills. He keeps it to himself, but on the eighth tee, he approaches Pat and speaks to him. Hi there, Pat. Uh, hello, Theo. Oh, how are you, Doc? Fine, Augie. Uh, Pat, what are those white pills you're taking? Okay, quiet down, everybody. Will you keep it quiet? Let's let the pros drive now. Okay, let's... Well, let's have it quiet, okay? Hey, good drive, Luke. Thanks, Pat. Oh, you're driving, Mr. Munson. Plenty of time, Augie. Glenn drives next. Okay, now let's let's keep it quiet, everybody. Let's no, just no, quiet no, down, all right? Come on, ball. Come on, get down. Stay on the fairway, ball. Oh, man. Tough luck, Glenn. Where'd I pick up that hook? Mr. Muncy, your driver. Thanks, Augie. Hey. 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 Now, let's, let's, let's let the man drive, okay? Oh, quiet, please. Okay, oh, good, thank you. Oh! Wish I had that ball. <laughs> Thanks, Glenn. Very dry, Pat. Thanks, Luke. Here, Augie. And he's a seven iron to the green, Mr. Munson. Oh, <laughs> seven or eight, Augie, depending on the lie. 
I'd say a seven. Whatever you say, Augie. Oh, uh, what were you saying, Doc? I asked about those pills you were taking. What are they? Oh, just aspirin. With my headache, I'm lucky I can even take them. Too much bottled cheer at the dinner last night? Yeah, I had this headache before I got to the dinner. Hmm. You, uh, you get them frequently? No. But I'm lucky to shot as well as I have, considering the one I picked up. <laughs> if you make par on this hole, you'll be in a charging position. If, if, if I bogeyed the last hole. You still went under, Mr. Munson. Not good enough, Augie. I'll get back to Sharon in the gallery. I was only wondering about those pills. Uh, good luck, Pat. I thought I'd uh, lost you, Dr. Theo. Oh, uh, those pills he's taking, they're just aspirin, Sharon. I could have told you that. He's been taking aspirin tablets since last night. I thought it was a hangover when Pat told me what they were. You should know better than that, Doctor. I, I should. Pat doesn't drink. This uh, next tea ought to be a good time to introduce your friend to Pat, Dr. Theo. Didn't know George was even in the gallery until we reached the 11th hole. Well, as long as I'm going to meet the famous Pat Muncie, it doesn't matter, Theo. Pat hasn't shot well today, Mr. Glasheen. Well, this is only the second round, Mrs. Muncie. He's got this plus two days to go, and I'm sure he'll win. So is his gallery. <laughs> Come on, George. Now's a good time for you to meet him. Uh, this is a long par three, Theo. You're telling me. 215 yards. I took a five the first day of the pro-am and a six the second. This 16th is a killer. Uh-oh. Yeah, first time I ever saw Pat argue with his caddy. Do you think this is a good time for me to meet Mr. Muncie? Why not? Uh, just a minute, though. I want to hear what this argument's all about. I tell you, I want the two iron, not the four. But, Mr. Muncie, it's only 215 yards. You'd be way over the green if you used the two. Look, give me the two iron and another aspirin. You're taking so much aspirin? I don't need any lectures from you, Augie. Now, give me the two. Here, Mr. Muncie, I still say you should I don't care what you say. I don't like to hit a four off a tee. Yes, sir, Mr. Munson. Pat. Uh, Pat, I want to introduce my friend, George Glasheen. Oh, how are you, Doc? Hello, Augie. Is your doctor, Augie? No. Uh, this is your friend, Dr. Theodore Bassett. Uh, how do you do? E excuse me, I got a hit. Okay. Hey, sir, man. All right, please. Uh, it's quiet, John. Uh, no noise while the players hit their tee shots. Quiet, please. That's nice. That's nice. time I've seen him do that. He birdied this hole twice on the Pro-Am. He was way long over the green this time. There he goes. He's a veritable Ben Hogan, George. Well, Pat's ability to concentrate on his game is beyond belief. Well, he'd better concentrate. His caddy told him to use a four iron. be lucky if he makes the cut after today's score. It'll be okay, Sharon. Pat'll snap out of it. After all, it's only a game, like he said. But he's having anxieties he's never had before, and he forgets things that used to be routine. Like, uh, like what? Well, I suppose they're little matters, but they're important to a pro golfer, Theo. Such as personally checking the number of clubs in his bag. Why, if Augie hadn't caught it, he'd had three putters in that bag this morning. <laughs> three? <laughs> three. All of a sudden, he's decided he isn't putting well, so he bought two new clubs in the pro shop, but he still used his regular putter. <laughs> what happened to the other two? Augie put them in Pat's locker. And he fails to remember certain hazards on certain holes, like on 18 yesterday. There was no excuse for him being in that trap. He just forgot it was there. I didn't forget it during the pro-am. I was in it. And Pat forgot all about signing his scorecard yesterday until Augie reminded him. Well, Sharon... Pat has been the top money winner on the tour for the past three years now. Well, what does that have to do with it? Maybe the role of being the invincible master of golf is taking its toll. It's the only thing he lives for, golf. <laughs> I come in a poor second. <laughs> no, I wouldn't say that. Just remember, no athlete can stay on top forever.
across America, folks are saving at the Sears Pre-Memorial Day sale. I got myself this handy weed whacker for only $49.99 and saved $5. It's got a powerful craftsman motor with two speeds for those tough jobs, plus a big 17-inch cut. Sears Weed Whacker at a great price. I got a heavy-duty two-speed sandy polisher for only $79.99. Save 30 bucks. That's a rugged craftsman tool and a great savings. It's, it's the, the Sears, Sears Pre-Memorial Day sale. sale. Available at most Sears retail stores. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Honey, we've been on the road all day, and you still look cool and crisp. Wearing these sear shorts and t-shirt help. They're so cool and packable on trips. I brought along several of each. The t-shirts come in solid shades, color keyed to the solid or patterned walking shorts, so I can affordably mix and match a vacation's worth of easy care sportswear. A summer's worth of looks. Mm-hmm, smart lady. Summer t-shirts and shorts from Sears. Cool, neat, and practical. Available in Mrs. Sizes. And now for men, a Sears super value on a vested four-piece suit. Just $89.97 is the special purchase price that buys a coat, two slacks, and a reversible vest that combine for a wardrobe of six different outfits. Come see for yourself that this special purchase, though not reduced, is an exceptional value. Sears vested four-piece suit, only $89.97 while quantities last. It's a value that's worth a special trip. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Available at most larger Sears retail stores. Pat Muncy had just made the cut at the end of two days' play in the American Classic Golf Tournament. But he had a streak of good luck and buried the first four holes during the third round, a thing that sent the huge gallery following him into ecstasies. His wife Sharon and their friend Dr. Theodore Bassett were in the gallery, a part of Muncie's mob. Pat had just gotten his fourth birdie after a sensational 60-foot putt that sent the gallery into cheers that wouldn't quit. When Pat Muncie started in a direction other than what the accompanying pros had taken. Where are you going, Luke, Glenn? Fifty is over this way. Fifty is over here. Come on, Augie. Are you going the wrong direction, same as they are? The fifty is that way, Mr. Muncie. I say it's this way. You joining us on the fifth or not, Pat? You like to take a bet it's this way? What are you doing, Pat? Adding psychological warfare to your bag of tricks? I say the fifty is that way. Now I bet you twenty bucks. Pat, you've played this course I don't know how many times. The fifty is that way. Look, Glenn, put up or shut up. Mr. Muncie, they're right. The 15 I don't the... need any advice from a caddy. Here's my 20, Pat. And mine. You want to pay up now or later, Mr. Muncie? Yeah. <laughs> Those four birdies have gone to your head. Just follow me to the 50. I'll settle with you then. It's just over this rise. A guy who's in a five-way tie for first in this tournament doesn't need any psychological warfare to help him. I agree with you, Glenn. Shall we go to the 50? Yeah, maybe the guys in front of us are off the green by now, Luke. Yeah, Pat can pay us there. Yeah, I'd have sworn the 50 was right here, Augie. Yeah, we're we all make mistakes, Mr. Muncy. This way, sir. Well, that's 40 bucks shot. Is it part of his plan? I mean, to upset Luke and Glenn? Why? Luke is two over par, Glenn is even, and Pat is three under. No, Theo, it's not part of his plan. Uh, makes no sense. I've never seen Pat forget the layout of a golf course like he's forgotten this one. Well, it's not an easy course. None of them are, but Pat actually making bets that he knew where the fifth tee was after playing how many times? We had two days of the Pro-Am, and this is round three of the tournament. And Pat played around before the Pro-Am started to get acclimatized to the course. I tell you, Dr. Theo, something's happened to him. Well, here's your five iron, Mr. Munson. I want a seven. You'll be short, Mr. Munson. What do my notes say? Well, there's the weeping willow tree. We're just opposite it. And it's 200 yards to the flag from here. About 160, 170. I say take a five, Mr. Munson. And I say give me the seven. You come up short of the green, sir. You'll see. Now give me the seven. I can't argue with you, but I still say you'd better use the five iron. Will you be quiet while I make my shot? Well, I don't know. Hey, wow! Oh, oh, oh. 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 Oh
your pitching wedge, Mr. Munson. Damn, I'm short. I said you'd be, Mr. Munson. What are you doing? Throwing a game? Who said that? Ah, just a guy from the gallery. You make a deal, Munson? What kind of deal? You throw the tournament. Throw the... Why, you dirty... Mr. Munson, Mr. Munson, come back now. Don't pay any attention to him. Don't pay any attention. I've never thrown anything in my life, but I'm going to throw you right out of here. Mr. Munson... Come on, you golf bum. I'd like to see you do it. You will, mister. It... Let Mr. Muncy, now you get back on the course. Who are you? Doing? I'm an Tell official me. of the PGA. Now I'm telling you one more time. Get back on the course. Now come on, Mr. Muncy, come on. Accusing me of throwing a tournament. There's no reason at all for Muncy coming up short like me. I should have slapped that guy alongside the head with my wedge. Mr. Muncy, Mr. Muncy, listen. When you finish this round and sign your scorecard, will you see me in the clubhouse? Yes, sir. What happened, Pat? What's all the fuss about? What did that guy yell at you? Uh, nothing, gentlemen. What do you mean, nothing? That bum in the gallery said I was trying to throw this tournament. Mr. Muncy, I'm just trying to get the game started again. Just because I come up short of the green, I'm throwing the tournament. I think that's your wife waving at you, Pat. Yeah, well, let her wave. Throwing the tournament. Well, why doesn't he at least acknowledge the fact that I'm here, Theo? He won't even look this way. Well, he's probably ashamed by the show he put on when he almost attacked that loudmouth in the gallery. Pat's in trouble, Doctor. You saw the manner of that PGA official. Yes, I saw it. That official wasn't kidding. A pro golfer doesn't try to attack a gallery eye. I know. No matter what. But to accuse Pat Muncy of throwing a tournament is just ridiculous. Well, you know it and I know it, but how many others do? Sears Radio Theater will return after this message from your local station. Here's a tip from your Better Business Bureau. Are you in the market for a used car? If you are, it would be wise to shop around until you get a feel for the market. It's important for you to find out if the car is covered by a warranty. A used car warranty is limited. For example, it may cover the first thousand miles or 30 days. Remember, however, the warranty is as good as the dealer who backs it. And you check his reliability with your local Better Business Bureau. Also, remember that careful inspection is the key to enjoying a used car. Be sure and look for rust. Check the tires, the shock absorbers, and the operating controls. And incidentally, it's also a good idea to take a test drive. You see, by giving the car the once-over before you buy it, you're protecting yourself against a faulty purchase and a lot of headaches after you've bought it. This has been a tip from your Better Business Bureau. Hey, buddy, can you give a fella a break? Sorry, fella, I only give at the office. I'm not looking for a handout. What can I do for you? Help save my life and breath. Do you need mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathing? I'm not the type. No, but you're smoking. And your smoke is hitting me where I breathe. And what with an allergy and pollution, you're not helping any. Sorry, I didn't mean to bother you. Sure, but the fact is that your smoke is getting in my eyes and nose and throat. And that's not a good song for my lungs. Well, you could always move away. I do, and then there's another one puffing away in my face. How about a deal? Like the Lung Association says, smoke if you must, but make smoking a private affair. Or quit. Secondhand smoke is truly offensive for non-smokers. Well, I'll give it a try. I wish you would, otherwise they're going to hang a tag on you. A tag? Yeah, cigarettes are a health hazard and so are you. Gotcha, buddy. Now about that handout. Save it. Let me give you one. Your lung association says that giving up smoking is a matter of life and breath. Muncie's mob had something to really cheer about at the end of that third round when Pat sank another miraculous putt for birdie on the 18th green and wound up in a five-way tie for first place. But Pat's troubles aren't over. Not yet, by any means. Really great putt, Pat. Thanks, Luke. Look at the leaderboard, Pat. You're in a five-way tie for first. I know, Glenn. Probably won't get to play with you tomorrow, but it's been great, Pat. Yeah, for me, too. Thanks, Luke. Glenn, it take my putter, Augie. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, what are you stopping me for? Well, you haven't been in the score since to sign your scorecard yet, Mr. Munson. Oh, oh. Thanks, Augie. Uh, and don't forget, right afterwards, you're supposed to see that PGA official in the clubhouse. <laughs> Mr. Muncy, uh, 
Why did you start into the gallery today? To hear what that guy said. A professional golfer is not supposed to pay any attention to remarks he may hear from the gallery. But that bum accused me of throwing the tournament just because I was short. I know, short of... I, I, I know, Mr. Muncy, but uh, that still doesn't excuse your actions. Well, what am I supposed to do? You've been a member of the PGA and on the tour long enough to know, Mr. Muncy. When that loudmouth accused me... Mr. Muncy, me... I don't care what he accused you of. Your insulting remarks and your near assault on that man is, is demeaning to a professional golfer. And the PGA will have no more of it. Now, is that clear? Yeah, that's clear. Okay, we understand each other. Now, good luck tomorrow in your final round. Thank you, sir. How do you account for Mr. Muncy's actions, Augie? I can't, Doc. I wish I could, but I can't. He's always been brilliant on any golf course he's ever played. You're telling me? Finest golf I ever catered for. Then, then what's happened? I don't know, Doc. He's making mistakes now Rank Duffer wouldn't make. Well, like what, Augie? Oh, there are so many, Doc, like on the 16th tee the second day. Why, he's used to four, sometimes a five iron if the wind was blowing behind us. There was no wind, no nothing. Except his stubbornness about using a two off of the 16th. Yeah, I was there. Then you saw how long he was over the green. Yeah, he was way over. And like yesterday, when he left the fourth green, he even had the nerve to bet the fifth tee was in a different direction. Yeah, I saw that, too. I was dumbfounded when Mr. Muncy walked off in a different direction. Well, he knows this course like the palm of his hand. Do, do you think he really forgot where the tee was, or, or was he trying to psych out the pros he was playing with? What for? They're good, but they're no match for Pat Muncy when he's on his game. Yeah, yeah. Has he said anything to you, like, well, or maybe like troubles with Sharon? No. No. He never talks about his personal life. You know how he is, or was, at least. Just the best golfer anybody ever saw. Funny, Mr. Muncy never hears the gallery. Oh, I expect arguments about club selections, especially now. But I was real surprised yesterday when he heard that guy in Muncie's mob sound off about him throwing the tournament. Just because he hit short to the green. Good thing you kept him from assaulting that man. That official from the PGA stopped him. More than I did. Did Mr. Muncie see the PGA official after he'd finished the round? I guess so. I reminded him he was supposed to. After I reminded him to sign his scorecard. He forgot again? It ain't like him, Doc. It ain't like Mr. Muncy at all to forget anything when it comes to golf. How's Pat this morning, Sharon? I don't know, Theo. After last night, I'm not sure I care. Oh? Oh, well, what happened last night? He threw a scene in a restaurant that really embarrassed me. But not him, not at all. <laughs> well, <laughs> what did he do? Well... You know those little old-fashioned boxes that hold matches? Huh? Uh, they're the kind that is all enclosed with the bottom that slides out? <laughs> yes, yes, I, I know. I used to practice tying surgical knots in those boxes. Well, I didn't even know Pat had one until he pulled it out. Oh. <laughs> well, what's embarrassing about that? What he did with it. It was full of dead flies, roaches, you name it. If it could fit in the box, he had it. What? Well, I, I don't get it. We had this dinner, see? Um, a real nice dinner. I thought that uh, whatever was troubling Pat might be gone. Then, uh, when we were almost through eating, he pulled out this box, this matchbox, slid it open, considered for a moment, uh, then put this dead cockroach under a small portion of the meat that was still on his plate. What? But... Muncie did that? Then he called for the waiter in a loud voice and complained about his food. Well, the waiter, when he saw the dead cockroach, called for the manager. Pat said he was not paying for anything served with dead roaches in it. The manager agreed with him, said both dinners would not be charged for, and asked Pat to please lower his voice. Lord, why, why, I don't understand. Why would Pat do a thing like that? Well, I don't know. He kept screaming and yelling about the dirty food in the place. Well, I got up and left the restaurant, went back to the motel. Uh, alone? Of course. And then did Pat come in later, Sharon? Oh, yeah. He was laughing and... Well, that's when I saw the contents of the matchbox. I told him, in no uncertain terms, that I'd break his arm if he tried to put a dead insect on my plate. Uh, what did he say to that? I don't know. He started chasing a moth that had flown into the room. I 
Well, I, I cried myself to sleep. Quiet, everybody. Quiet down. Uh, uh, let the man fall out. What hole are we on, Ozzy? On number 11, sir. You want any advice on this part, Mr. Muncy? Looks like the break is to the left. It only looks that way, Mr. Muncy. If I was you, I'd play it about an inch to the right of the cup. But you're not me, are you, Ozzy? No, sir. So I'm going to play it my way, to the left of the cup. Get the flag, Ozzy. Yes, sir, Mr. Muncy. Um, let's see. If I birdie this hole, I'll have the lead... So, an inch to the left. Oh! That damn caddy told me to play it to the left. You want the flag in or out, sir? Damn you, Augie! What the hell? Pat threw that club! His caddy's out cold. He caught him right in the jaw with that putter! I'm a doctor. Let me see that man. Leave him alone. He's bleeding. I said to leave him alone. He got what he deserved. Are you cold-blooded monster? Let me at you. Break it up. Break it up. Sure Break you it up. Get what you deserved. Come with us, Muncie. This round is finished. What do you mean, finished? We're only on the 11th. It's finished for you, Muncie. Now, come on. I'll stay with his caddy. I know him well. Okay, doctor. Okay, okay. Now, come on, Muncie. <laughs> Me, yes, Mrs. Muncy. You know where you are? Yes, ma'am. In the hospital. Do you know what happened? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Muncy threw his foot at me. <sighs> Have the police been to see you yet? Yes, ma'am. And? I ain't ringing no charges against Mr. Muncy. That's very generous of you, Augie. Mr. Muncy has been good to me, ma'am. Until this tournament, you mean? Something's eating at him, ma'am. Yes. Did he, did he say or do anything odd the first 11 holes today? No. He was like his old self the first 10. Had the sweet swing of a Gene Little or Sam Sneed, but was longer. Why, on number three, you know that long par five? Then monster holds that 650 yards long, 52 exactly. Mm -hmm. What about him? He was on the edge of the green in two shots and sunk a 70-foot putt for an eagle three. I know. I was in the gallery. Then, on number 11, I told him to putt about an inch to his right, but he insisted on putting left, and when he missed, that's when he threw the putter at me. Too bad you didn't see it coming. <laughs> yes, ma'am. But, like I said, I ain't bringing no charges against Mr. Muncy. It was nice of you to meet me, Dr. Theo. Wouldn't have it any other way, Sharon. Now, how's Pat this morning? Sleeping like a log when I left the motel. And last night? He still doesn't think he's done anything wrong. That Augie deserved what he got. Sick. He's sick, Sharon. Maybe with your help, I can convince the PGA of this. Uh, here we are. After you. Uh, how do you do, uh, Mrs. Muncy? This is Dr. Theodore Bassett, a friend of my husband's. How do you do, Doctor? Uh, please, uh, be seated. I played in the pro-am with Pat. Oh, yes, I, I remember. Mrs. Muncy, I'll get right to the point. Please do. Mr. Muncy faces permanent disbarment from the PGA and uh, any PGA-sponsored golf tournaments. The um, caddy, Augie Parvin, is not going to bring charges against my husband. But the man your husband had the fight with, uh, he's charging Mr. Muncy with assault and battery. He wasn't injured. Well, he's fortunate. It was Mr. Muncy's intention to, well, to use an expression, knock him cold as he did his caddy. And whether or not Mr. Aggie Parvin brings charges is immaterial. The policeman... Well, how can the police... In uh... view of the many witnesses. And Muncy's mob contained many, ma'am. The police have been besieged that the throwing of the putter by Mr. Muncy was deliberate. But Mr. Muncy is sick. From what, doctor? Well... I don't know for sure, but I do know his conduct during the American Classic was, 
Well, to say the least, unusual for Pat Muncy. No, it's the only tournament we're concerned with, Doctor. Pat Muncy has done more for golf than any other pro on the tour. As I said, the American Classic is the only tournament we're concerned with here. And I also said I'd get right to the point. Which is? Your husband not only faces permanent disbarment from the PGA and all future PGA-sponsored golf tournaments, but if the man who is suing him and the police bring charges, charges that are supported by numerous witnesses, that your husband deliberately threw that club at Mr. Augie Parvin, uh, your husband, Mrs. Muncy, may also face prison. <laughs> Dear, today I found the bedroom suite of my dreams at a great price. That's a coincidence. I found one that has all the features. Well, mine has authentic country styling. So does mine. Does yours have a beautiful 26-step finish? Nothing but, and I get a choice of 13 different pieces. All built to last for a long time? Yes, with sturdy tongue and groove construction and dovetail jointed drawers. Is yours Sears, Sears open, open hearth, hearth bedroom, bedroom furniture? furniture? Sears open hearth bedroom collection. Expert craftsmanship at a reasonable price. Select from 13 different pieces. Now at most Sears retail stores. Sears National Automotive Sale. Get big national savings on the Sears Die Hard. Only $49.99 with trade-in. You save $8 on the maintenance-free battery that starts nearly every car in Indy. And save on Sears Dynaglass Belted 28 Tires. They're on sale now at 40% off spring 1979 general catalog prices. Plus federal excise tax. Dynaglass Belted 28 Tires. Save 40% at most Sears Tire and Auto Centers. Prices may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Stop at Sears. Oh, here I go again. It's time to rent one of those steam-type carpet cleaners. Why rent? Now Sears puts power in a carpet cleaner you can own yourself. The Power Spray from Sears for easy home carpet cleaning. Power Spray sprays hot water into your carpet, then sucks up the dirty water. You can see the dirt you get out. Dirt you didn't even know was there. The Power Spray Carpet Cleaner, a convenient carpet cleaner you can own yourself. Available at most Sears retail stores. Kenmore. <coughs> Solid as Sears. Cicely Tyson again And here's the concluding act of Muncie's Moth Order in the court You may continue, Dr. Bassett uh, Yes uh, Now, what was I saying? I asked you to state your qualifications, Doctor Oh, yes uh, I am a neurologist and a neurosurgeon and a golfer? Hmm, well, I play every chance I get. Yes. You played in the pro amateur preceding the American Classic Golf Tournament, did you not? Yes, I did. As the partner of the defendant, Mr. Pat Muncy? Yes, sir. And what were his actions then? Why, well, perfectly normal. For the two days you played with him? Yes, sir. Well, then... How do you account for the defendant's subsequent actions during the tournament? Uh, I've known Pat Muncy since he came on the PGA Tour ten years ago. Answer the question, Dr. Bassett. <sighs> He's never exhibited any psychotic conditions whatsoever. Will your honor please instruct the witness to answer the question? Answer the question, Dr. Bassett. Oh, well, I don't remember what it was, your honor. I asked... How do you account for the defendant's subsequent actions during the tournament? Well, um, uh, which days, sir? The last two, to be specific. Do you mean the last two rounds, then? I do. The third round, when his assault on a member of the gallery was aborted only by the interference of his caddy and a PGA official. And the fourth round when the defendant physically assaulted a member of the crowd who was only trying to help the caddy Mr. Muncy had knocked out when he deliberately threw his golf club. Pat Muncy is not a homicidal maniac. Just answer the question, I am trying to. Your Honor, it's only an educated guess on my part. But there must be some physical reason for the changes that have taken place in Pat Muncy. Your Honor, will you please... Please, this is a court of law, not an arena. Now, has or has not a physical examination of the defendant been made? Not to my knowledge, Your Honor. Nor to mine. And I think it should be made. I agree with you, Doctor. 
The court directs that a physical examination of the defendant be made at once. Sharon, my guess proved correct. X-rays show that Pat has a subdural hematoma. A what? A subdural hematoma. What's that, Dr. Theo? Uh, it's a blood clot on the brain. Oh, my God. Oh, now, don't come oh. apart on me, Sharon. A, a blood clot on the br brain? Where did you get that? I was about to ask you. Has Pat ever received any head wounds? Not, not that I know of. Well, now, he must have injured his head at some time or another. Most people have, you know. Well, I, I don't know. Uh, we've been married 12 years. If it happened before then, I, I wouldn't know about it. Well, if it happened earlier, he'd have shown symptoms earlier. A blood clot on the brain. It's a very small clot, and recovery from the operation is assured. You mean you have to operate on Pat? A subdural hematoma always requires an operation, Sharon. Oh. Now, think, girl. Did Pat get a head wound any time recently? Uh, I, I can't remember his ever... Wait a minute. How, how severe would it have to be? Well, it could have been very minor. Well, um, we didn't even think about it after it happened, but... Uh, but what, uh, Sharon? Well, he started taking aspirin for headache that night, uh, even before we went to dinner. What dinner? Well, the night before the professional rounds began. Well, what happened to him? He bumped his head getting into the car when we were leaving at the end of the pro-am. Severely? Well, no. I mean, we even joked about it. Could that have caused this? I mean, there was no blood or anything like that. Well, yes, it could. Although a subdural hematoma generally evidences itself some weeks or months later by progressive symptoms, such as those Pat has shown. Now, uh, has, has he had any dizzy spells? Well, uh, <laughs> he had to sit down to put on his socks, yeah. He said it made him dizzy to put them on standing up, which is the way he's always done. Why didn't you tell me, Sharon? Why should I? I thought it was just age creeping up on Pat. Headaches and occasional dizzy spells are signs of it, aren't they? Not necessarily, no. When do you operate on Pat? Tomorrow morning. And don't worry. He'll be back on the tour, belting out those long drives and sinking those impossible putts in a few months. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah, sure I can hear you. <laughs> you remember the nursery rhyme, Fuzzy Wuzzy? Huh? Fuzzy Wuzzy was a bear. Fuzzy Wuzzy had no hair. <laughs> fuzzy Wuzzy wasn't very fuzzy, was he? <laughs> and I love you, <laughs> bald head and all. <laughs> but the hair will grow back and... I sure love you. Oh, did I interrupt something? Uh, come on in, Theo. Yes, Doctor, please do. I thought I'd bring you some good news for a change. Yeah, like what? Well, for one thing... Don't keep us in suspense, Dr. Theo. Please, Sharon, you're talking to the man who saved my life. Now, the guy who was suing you has dropped everything. You mean I won't have to go to jail? Not a chance. He's only anxious for you to get back on the tour, as is the PGA. Oh, what a relief. That really makes my day, Theo. And as your surgeon, I think you can be ready to play golf in time for the National Open. Uh, Pat's tired. It shows. I know. Well, this is the 18th hole. I know that, too. If he ties, there could still be a playoff. If, if, if. And if he birdies the hole... Theo, this is a par five, 590-yard hole. You're talking birdies? Well, Pat's drive was over 300 yards. And his second shot was short of the green by what? 20, 30 yards? Quiet, please. Please, will you be quiet? I shouldn't ever have been short, Augie. It's okay, Mr. Muncy. Mr. Harvey was short, too. What is he to the flag? Uh, I'd say about 35 yards. As you can see, the pen is set back in the corner of the green. Mm hmm. With a big bunker behind it. Don't worry about it, Mr. Munson. What'll you do if I'm in it, Augie? Kick it out? <laughs> you won't be in it, Mr. Munson. Not the way you're playing today. <laughs> yeah, Harvey's addressing the ball now. Let's be still. 
Pretty shot. Pretty shot. Real pretty. Boy, it's a great shot, Harvey. He can't be more than three feet from the cup. The way he has been putting, it looks like a cinch birdie. But he got my work cut out for me. Yes, sir. You want your wheels or your nine iron, sir? I think I'll take the nine, Augie, and try to run it. Well, here goes nothing. Congratulations. Thanks, Congratulations. Harvey. Thank you very much. That eagle on 18. Oh, I thought I had you with that birdie putt just waiting for me. <laughs> so did I. Well, I sure didn't expect you to hold out. Neither did I, Harvey. I was just trying to get close enough so we'd tie. Oh, your wife's running this way, Mr. Muncy. Hey, Sharon, did you see it? All the way. Oh, I'm so proud of My you. My first national open. I know, I know. Oh, this is... Uh, uh, you, you know Mr. Harvey, don't you? Oh, yeah, we've met several times. Hi, Sharon. Hello, Paul. <laughs> oh, that was a great shot your husband made. He always does. No, not always. <laughs> hey, where's Theo? Dr. Bassett saved my life. Doc and Augie are my caddy. Ah, uh, but neither of us had anything to do with you getting an eagle on this hole. He's absolutely right. Man. Oh, they're only responsible for my staying in the PGA. <laughs> yeah, I thought Theo would be with you, Sharon. He was. Walked the whole round with me. Uh, he wore a red sweater, a tan trouser. There he is, standing over there. Oh, yeah, I see him. Hey, Theo. He's waving at you. Guess he wants the gallery to thin out and the photographers to disappear first. Oh, Muncie's mob. It's been a great finish for them, Pat. They followed you, Harvey, as much as they did me. Oh, no, they didn't. You can hear them now, can't you? Yeah, I can hear them. Muncie's mob was polite to me, Pat. But they're cheering you. graduation time, so give your graduate a scholar. I've always wanted a smart girl for my son. I mean the Scholar Electric Typewriter at Sears. The perfect gift for son or daughter at only $169.99. That's $30 off. The Scholar features power return, power repeat backspace, power shift, and more. Key set tabulator and touch set margins plus carrying case. The Scholar Electric is really my son's type. At my type of deal, $30 off till June 9th. Prices and dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. Yes. No, maybe so. It's a sunny bunch summer for girls on the go. Summer starts for your daughter with Easy Care halters, tanks, tees, and jogger shorts in colorful teams to switch around all summer. And each sunny bunch piece has a sunny saying and character screen print. Tops, shorts, and play sets that pack a pretty bunch. When it comes to packing sportswear, the choice is sunny bunch. Jump into summer with sunny bunch funwear for your girls in sizes 7 to 14. What's in the bag? A package deal from Sears that lets me put my best foot forward. How's that? I saved 20% on this five-pair bag of all-pro sports socks. What great looks, great fit, and the savings really stack up. 20% off. You saved the bundle all right. But are there other socks on sale? Choose from casual, sporty, and support styles, too, in three- or five-pair package deals from Sears. All at 20% off. Sale ends May 26th. Dates may vary in Alaska and Hawaii. All items available at most large larger Sears retail stores. The Sears Radio Theater has been brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company, where our policy is satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Sears, where America shops for value. Muncie's Mob was written by Ted Sherdeman, produced and directed by Fletcher Markle. Your hostess was Cicely Tyson. Our stars were Barney Phillips, Joan McCall, and Howard Culver. 
Featured in the cast were Don Blakely, Dawes Butler, Jack Carroll, Byron Kane, Vic Perrin, and Norman Alden. The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. This is Art Gilmore speaking. The Elliott Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CBI.